Let's fucking go, man. All I've wanted to see during this Xbox showcase was something about Gears. It's been five years since Gears 5, and we knew the Coalition had been hard at work on something, but weren't too sure what it was. And finally, we get a brief look into the next Gears installment. As the Xbox showcase was nearing its end, I was starting to have doubts about seeing anything Gears related. Then they dropped this announcement trailer. I'm super excited for this one and want nothing more for the Gears franchise to be revived. I absolutely adore these characters. For those of you who have not seen it, I will let the trailer run right now. And if you already have seen it, you can just jump straight to the next chapter of the video to see my breakdown of the announcement trailer. So this is all in-engine footage, that engine being Unreal 5 for those of you that are wondering. It opens with us in someone's home. The television has a civil emergency message on it that reads, Kelowna District, follow safety protocols, proceed to nearest shelter. Kelowna District is a location in Tyrus, which is a nation on the planet Sarah, similar to Earth, where Gears takes place. We then hear some banging like fists being ex exchanged and smashing through the wall, come a Locust drone and Marcus. Marcus loses his Retro Lancer during the altercation, so is forced to fight off the Locust with his hands. The Locust drone hits him with a gnarly left hook, and Marcus spots his Retro Lancer. He reaches for it, and the Locust drone says, no, no, and stomps on Marcus's hand. Marcus then kicks the Locust's knee, causing the Locust to lose his balance, which buys Marcus some time to crawl for his Lancer. Just before reaching it, the Locust says, no, no, once more, and grabs Marcus by the shin and throws him against the wall, and then throws him again across the room. As the Locust drone approaches, Marcus, scrambling for something to help him in this fight, grabs a hold of the TV and slaps the absolute shit out of the Locust with it. This buys him just enough time to run to the center of the room and collect his rifle. Marcus, being held against the ceiling, knees the Locust in the head which allows him to get his feet back on the ground. The Locust, still with a solid grip on the rifle, pins Marcus against the wall. Marcus brilliantly pierces the broad bayonet into the wall and hits the Locust with a nasty headbutt. He then disengages the blade from the Lancer, allowing him to use the rifle and obliterates the grub's head. Marcus begins to collect himself and then the floor starts to shake. And then it breaks. Marcus grabs a hold of a pipe and we see an emergence hole erupt through the surface. Just as the pipe breaks, a hand grabs a hold of Marcus, saving his life. 
it's revealed that this hand just so happens to be none other than Dom. And this felt very, very good to see. The sensational piano kicks in and no words were exchanged, but the camaraderie and brotherhood of these two is definitely felt. They both look out at the once beautiful nation of Tyrus and see loads of locust holes and emerging from the hollow are huge spider-like creatures known as corpsers. The title of the game is then announced, Gears of War E-Day. So that is the announcement trailer we got, and it was kind of a banger in my opinion. So there are some more details about the game that I'm going to dig into now. Xbox Wire released an article going over Gears of War E-Day and why this is the future for the franchise. I won't touch on everything in the article, but I will go over the more important information. The link to the article will be in the description below. So coming over to the article here, uh, just a little summary of it, it says, Gears of War E-Day is an origin story that depicts the horror of Locust invasion on Emergence Day through the eyes of Marcus Phoenix. It then goes on to say that we'll follow younger versions of the series' original heroes, Marcus Phoenix and Dom Santiago, as they begin their fight against the Locust invasion. So for those that don't know, this Locust invasion, or E-Day, that they're referring to here, happened 14 years prior to the very first game. So moving on, creative director Matt Searcy says, we realize that a lot of words we use to describe the franchise were what our fans also use, phrases like brotherhood, brutality, pathos, awe, which in my opinion, Gears 1, 2, and 3 definitely evoke that feeling of pity and sadness. And that story is one that I specifically keep very close to my heart. Such a fantastic story that I think is probably now due for a replay. So be sure to subscribe and like this video if you want to see not only let's plays of the first three games, but narrative breakdowns and lore videos as well. He continues on saying, why E-Day? That's the moment it all comes together. It's the heart of the Gears universe. Everything that happens is shaped by this day. Being able to play during the beginning of this Locust War on E-Day does sound pretty fun to me. It sounds pretty compelling. Anything that gets me more Dom, personally, I'm down for it. So, continuing on the article, fans of those mainline Gears of War games can expect to feel at home with how Gears of War E-Day feels. The Coalition is working to recreate and improve the series' trademark third-person action, charging between cover and life or death situations, all set within an explosive campaign that combines satisfying gameplay and emotive, character-led storytelling. However, all this is told through a modern lens, and rooted in groundbreaking technology, giving the Coalition room to really build out those elements. It's a careful balance, a classic Gears of War game that feels authentic next to the original, but with truly next-gen tech behind it. So all of this sounds great, except for the, the modern lens part. I never like to hear this phrase or phrases like, for modern audiences or global audiences. These to me are red flag phrases. Hopefully this is solely referring to the technology and nothing else. So continuing, it's going to feel like a new Gears game because that's what it is. Cersei says, it's us revisiting the tone and the feeling of what makes Gears great, but we're tapping into new techniques, new processes, and new technology that's going to make the gameplay feel better than ever. It's going to be awesome, a game that feels both truly new and authentically Gears. So cool, most of that sounds good. Uh, bringing the monsters back. Gears of War E-Day is set 14 years before the events of the original Gears of War and tells the story of the first Locust emergence on Sarah. Sarah is like the, basically their Earth, it's the planet. As the game unfolds, we'll get to see how an ill-prepared world responds to a threat like the Locust. The Coalition are being very intentional to recast the Locust, not simply as foes, but as living nightmares. This I really like, that um, they're recasting not simply as foes, but as living nightmares. That seems pretty cool. These aren't your typical alien or zombie video game antagonists. They're mysterious, formidable creatures that dwell beneath the earth, tapping into our deepest fears. The design brief was pretty simple, explained Cersei. Locusts are the monsters under the bed. What would happen to the people of Sarah in seeing this overwhelming army of monsters and trying to figure it out? What are you going to do? So studio art director Aaron Hanbeck explains further, when players experience E-Day, they see the monsters through the eyes of those encountering them for the first time. The design team prioritized redefining the Locust drone, which had slowly become mere cannon fodder as the series progressed. We transformed the drone into something fearsome, physically intimidating, and utterly brutal. Hanbeck notes, highlighting its enhanced status just behind Marcus and Dom in the announced trailer, getting the drone right was crucial, everything else with the Locusts were scaling up from there. So, I mean, just look at that. Just looking absolutely more freaky and gross. I love it. 
I'm all about it. And that probably helps explain a little bit as to, you know, this is probably the, this very well could be the very first locust that Marcus here um, encounters, which was, which I mean, that's absolutely why he was just getting his butt handed to him at the beginning of that announcement trailer for sure. So moving on through the article, Fawcett confirms to me that Ide is a story of many origins, including the Chainsaw Lancer, but opts to keep the specifics of those stories to herself for now. Suffice it to say, we're not just learning how Marcus and Don came to be the heroes we know in Ide. So this is super cool. Looks like a bit of foreshadowing on how the Chainsaw Lancer was created. We know Marcus's father, Adam Phoenix, designed this during the first year of the Locust War, so that would be cool to see more about this in the game as well. That'd be super dope. So continuing on, we have the beginnings of Brotherhood. This story is, of course, told from the perspectives of a much younger Marcus and Dom. While the pair are seasoned veterans of the Pendulum Wars, the human conflict taking place before the series begins, this is a wholly new threat for the pair to navigate. The Best Gears games have these super emotional themes around shared burden, belonging, trust, and loyalty. And Marcus and Dom have a really interesting relationship going into E-Day, Cersei says. To give some background context leading into the story of E-Day, Marcus and Dom are connected through Dom's older brother, Carlos, who died on a battlefield with Marcus. The pair were best friends, so Marcus and Dom are in the early stages of forming a kinship over a shared loss and navigating those emotions together. We're telling the origin story of Marcus and Dom and their bond. This is the bond that defines the franchise, Cersei says. Absolutely, that is the bond that um, defines the franchise. Absolutely. They're not the characters we know from Gears 1 to 3. They don't have 10 years of fighting the locust between them. When the game opens, they're supposed to be peace on Sarah, and they're trying to figure out life without this person they both loved. So it looks like... Um, the opening of the game that we'll be playing is uh will probably be before the events of the of the announcement trailer there of e day you know we'll get a little bit of insight on on maybe carlos and the bond that dom and marcus had um that they formed after the death of of marcus's best friend there carlos and um dom's brother so people are going to see the formation of this brotherhood that is so iconic in gears super cool so they continue to go on about more of the Coalition's vision and how they are taking advantage of Unreal Engine 5. And then we have here the future of Gears. Of course, this isn't the end of other ongoing stories in the Gears series. The team is content with the stories told in Gears 4 and Gears 5 and is by no means abandoning them. But the collective passion for such an iconic origin story was simply too great to ignore. Absolutely, I agree with that. That is too great to ignore. The story of Ide and the origin of Marcus and Dom are such powerful, pivotal events that the Coalition couldn't wait to tell it. We're super proud about Gears 4 and Gears 5 and the stories that were told, Fawcett adds. We're not retreating from the storyline in any way, but in this moment, we had an opportunity to write our next step, and this one just felt too good to miss. It's also important to note that Ide is not a spin-off. It's a completely new entry to the mainline series set earlier in the timeline, the events of the game not only serve as an exciting origin tale of two beloved characters, but it also adds detail and context to this period that will resonate through stories that will follow. In E-Day, the Locusts are not foes that our characters are accustomed to fighting. They are mysterious, formidable, and overwhelming, an unforeseen horror that Marcus, Dom, and the rest of Sarah must learn to deal with before it's too late. Everything that happens in E-Day will shape the future of Gears of War for the better. This is the Gears of War story you've always wanted to hear, and it's going to be incredible to keep up to date with ongoing news about Gears of War. Ide, follow Gears of War on X slash Twitter. You know, whatever you want to call it. And that's the end of the article, guys. So all this is super exciting. I've wanted to make a video about Gears for a while now, so I'm just so I'm just so thrilled that I could finally put this together. We still have yet to get a release date or gameplay and all that good stuff, so be sure to subscribe as I will be following this game very closely and reporting on any news for it here on out. Like I mentioned earlier, I'll be doing a retro revival series and running through Gears 1, 2, and 3 again as it has been years since I have played those games. I'll be breaking down the lore and narrative of these games as we go through them, so be on the lookout for those in the future. But yeah, that is going to do it for this video. How do you all feel about the announcement? Excited? Skeptical? Let me know in the comments below. I'm just absolutely stoked for this and cannot wait to play it when it comes out. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.